Hello. Can it, can everyone see this at the moment? Yeah. 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 And do you have a full screen? We do. Yes. Okay. Amazing. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just a little bit worried because obviously Jez, I couldn't see you coming in last time. Uh, here, we go. here we go. So I'll just leave that down there. Okie doke. So um, this is the idea generation and deliberation webinar. Um, so I'm going to chat a little bit about what idea generation is and what it could be used for and the same with deliberation and some online and offline examples of these and again how they can be used together so offline and online. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about moderation um, especially online because that's quite important with this topic and then any extra considerations you might want to make if you're doing idea generation and deliberation online. So again a quick overview and um, you guys all know what digital PB is I'm sure um, but participatory budgeting is a way for communities to decide how money is spent proposing ideas, discussing them, and voting on them as a very simple, short, and sweet uh, term for what it is. Um, so I showed, Holly, I know you've seen this before, but I'll just go over it again. So this is the kind of, uh, we've got a little sort of table here of what it could look like. Um, so usually you start with a budget and then it'll go on to idea generation. So the communities will contribute their ideas uh, they'll generate some ideas and then those will go on to be spoken about, discussed, prioritised uh, and then they'll get sifted through and then finally to a voting phase where the winning projects will get allocated money. However, um, it doesn't always have to start with a budget. You could just start with um, prioritising your themes. So thinking about ideas that could be thought about first so what what's most important in your area what's most important in your community and then sifting through these ideas and then a year it could be a year later before you even have any money and then having a vote so the process doesn't have to be as as straightforward as that it could be you start with this and then you end up with this and um, it could be a little bit more mixed up than the way that that is that diagram is showing so idea generation uh, it's basically the means by which you generate proposals for how to spend the money. Very short and simple way of describing it. So what can you use it for? Um, it's good to learn about what the community or area or neighbourhood, uh, what they care about. You can use it to prioritise ideas. Um, you can use it to allocate a budget uh, to meet a criteria or particular themes. So, for example, uh, regeneration projects, it could be themes on poverty, tackling poverty, um, climate change, tackling environment, environmental problems, or even education, so, uh, or youth programs. Um, you can use idea generation as a way of working collaboratively, so bringing people together to come up with solutions. Um, is that someone joined? Sorry, that might have been me receiving a message. Okay. I just want to check. I'm not missing anyone. Uh, no one's at the door. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, you can come up with creative or unique solutions. So I was speaking to a woman uh, a few weeks ago, actually, and I, can't, I think she must have been from, where was she from? North Ayrshire, South Ayrshire, one of the Ayrshires. But she was telling me about, um, so some ideas don't actually require uh, money. So they were looking for ways uh, to get more buses on the roads because there wasn't enough buses to get from A to B. So they're kind of out in the country. Um, and there was these old buses and uh, they had stored away and some bus drivers they found and they had volunteered to take these people. Um, so again, it requires a uh, little money, but it's just a solution that people spoke about and decided actually this is a great idea. Why don't we use these buses that aren't being used at the moment? Uh, renovate them and get them up and running again um, so that people can get from A to B. 
Um, again, it's a way of engaging people into community or local issues. So if something's happening locally, um, even like, for example, uh, my play park next door is uh, really run down. I want, to, I want the community to, to work collaboratively to think about ways that we can make this better or, you know, uh, I don't know, a community garden project. It doesn't just have to be um, proposals. It could be something that's more uh, local or community based. So why would you use an idea generation tool? So um, we kind of spoke a little bit about it in voting, but it's overcoming barriers of time and place. So you can have, instead of having a, a idea generation event or a few meetings, you've got this uh, lengthened amount of time. So it could be four weeks you've got to participate and come up with ideas online. You don't have to travel to an event to get there you can you can sit on your computer or your phone and and think about different ideas um, it's transparent so if it's done um transparently you can actually see some of the ideas that are coming up um, it's an increased number of people are able to get involved if they can't make an event so more people can get involved um, it's not just people that live locally or that go to these events uh, recurringly an increased number of people are able to input their own ideas. So it's not just the council or the community or certain uh, organizations putting in the ideas that they think. It's actually individuals uh, able to input their own ideas. And again, what we're chatting about collective collaboration so people can work together on ideas. It's not just um, separate organizations doing separate things. You can actually go, okay, I've got an idea. Um, mine's is similar to that and, and work together. And again, it builds online community presence. So, of course, with everything, there's challenges. So one of the challenges is actually getting ideas that are feasible. So I think, Jez, you were talking about a little bit about that. But um, you can have hundreds of ideas uh, coming through the system, especially if the criteria isn't clear. So it's really important to have a well-communicated brief. Um, or rules or guidelines that explains like what they're looking for when uh, people are inputting ideas online. So if it's done offline, um, for example, um, people are putting paper or even email to uh, the council or the community representative, you have to, uh, and these people are going to have to get all of this information online. And this can take up a lot of time. So even if you do an entirely offline PB process, um, it's a good idea to put some information about the proposals online. So an example of this was Leith Chooses. I think, uh, well, they were known as Leith Decides, sorry. Um, so they had all their projects up online so that people could look at them before going to the voting event. Um, and again, uh, gathering media. So if people are wanting to sort of do campaign videos or you know, put up photos or make it look really interesting and cool, uh, that can take up a lot of time. So there could be a, an unfair balance between big or organizations um, and smaller or even individuals. So the challenge is providing some support for these individuals or, gr or smaller groups to uh, with their proposals. So again, it can take up staff time. So it's another challenge. So deliberation. Um, in this context, uh, in PB, it's the way in which ideas are discussed, deliberated, prioritized, and decided on. And I'm gonna add one in, um, deliberation can also be debating as well, so deliberating. Some of the challenges with this, um, again with, um, sorry, with idea generation, user accessible access. So what I mean by that is, can everyone get online? Is everyone able to actually, you know, are they digitally, do they have access to the system? Um, again, so someone's gonna have to monitor some of this content. So if there's new proposals coming in online, if there's new debates or there's comments, someone, a, a member of staff or a few selected allocated people will have to have a look through this information. And do you know one of the biggest challenges is actually getting people to participate in online dialogue. Um, you know, a lot of the time there's a low number of participants or repeat participants. 
Um, and this can skew a representation of views. So if someone new is coming on and they just see all the, uh, you know, five people have been commenting and it's the same five people over and over, um, then it can, it can be a little bit, um, it's not representative. And we talk about deliberation um, in a way that's is sort of linked to diversity of ideas and sources. Um, but again, it could be likely to gather like-minded people instead of so opening up to a bit more debate and deliberation. Um, and, and with most online platforms like Facebook or social media, threads have a short life. Um, people come and go, and a lot of people actually just lurk in the development of debates um, and they're there's a bit of a fear around entering discussions. Um, another challenge with deliberation, um, it's not the same online as it is offline. So the same level of deep dialogue and empathy that you get face to face is not the same online. Um, again, it's not always easy to view a spectrum of arguments unless the tool's designed. So for example, Facebook, you get a lot of like um, uninformed deliberation, um, but your priorities, uh, it's got the debate function so you can for and against, um, which we spoke a little bit about in voting. Um, so you can actually write comments that are against and for, and you can also up, up like or down like uh, comments. Um, Facilitation, again, this will have to be active. So you might have to prompt discussion or you might have to react. So you might have to intervene when someone breaks the rules. And facilitation is, is a skill in itself and this requires staff time and training. Um, again, setting rules and boundaries. Sometimes there could be criticism of counsel or services. So you actually might need to manage internal concerns raised by colleagues. So whilst it's better if people come to the platform solutions focused, some people that feel that they don't always have other resource to raise issues. So, you know, they might use the platform as a complaint space, uh, a complaint space, sorry. Um, so again, it's, it's coming up with the right guidelines for what this platform is for. Um, another challenge is without finding ways to draw people back to the site. So for example, notifications or email reminders or social media, individuals may only engage once and then they'll forget about the site. You know, just like a lot of social media, you're sc scrolling through Twitter um, and it's very easy to forget sometimes. So why use a digital tool? Again, what we spoke about, not everyone is able to attend an event. Um, and this is especially true with those of caring responsibilities or people who work shifts, you know, at nighttime or during the day or at the weekend. And again, those living in rural uh, communities. So um, transport ac access. <laughs> As such, it makes it easier for a wider range of citizens uh, to have a chance to get involved if there's an online option. Again, it can create an online presence in community. Um, and this can be ongoing. So I'll talk a little bit about this later, but um, putting successful projects up online and having media and milestones up there um, can kind of have that sort of positive community presence. You know, uh, we've done this and it's, it's gone well. Um, and it maintains an ongoing dialogue with citizens. Um, it tends to create a longer deliberation phase. So you've not just got an event or a day to do it. Um, people can discuss uh, issues or proposals in their own community or carry out their own research into what the projects are trying to achieve. Um, and this can increase transparency. So people are actually talking about it online and it provides another space to think outside the box. So what I was talking about earlier with the buses, uh, people could potentially save money on projects because um, citizens can come up with unique solutions um, that might not have even been thought of before. So um, I can't think of any on the spot. I'm not being very creative today, but you know what I mean. So um, when we talk about sort of idea generation and deliberation, the first part that's really important is getting the, the sort of whoever's designing the system uh, to design in the open. So this is just an option, but 
have the rules out in the open. Um, you can even have a steering group sort of, um, you can have this up online and up for discussion already. So why we've decided to do this, do it this way and this way, if that makes sense. So having everything already transparent um, up online. And consider this using, you know, if you've got a steering committee, um, um, I spoke about this a little bit earlier, but instead of having the budget first, what think about your priorities first. So you can actually have this as a topic of discussion. So what are the community's priorities? What should we be generating ideas on before even coming to the process itself? Um, and then again, are you going to have your events and meetings displayed online? How open is this going to be? Um, is there going to be information or outcomes from, you know, steering group meetings or committee meetings? Are they going to be made available online? How will you collect information from face-to-face -face meetings or events? So um, will there be, I don't know, like media gathering or uh, feedback forms or things like that that you can input online so that it's accessible to more people and what are the most important bits of information so if you were a citizen what would you want to know about if if this process was happening so what why is you know criteria why is the criteria been set the way it has or for proposals or the dates that are upcoming or upcoming events um okay so i'm just going to talk a little bit about sort of questions that you might want to consider so the first few are how are you going to support so the questions sorry everyone um these are going to be made available i've got a sort of information sheet that i've created on both voting and idea generation deliberation so these will be made available um, and they'll be made available on knowledge hub and on our website as well um so anyway so how are you going to support citizens to be involved in the creation and development of project ideas? So you might want to consider making your PB process open to the public for idea generation, allowing citizens to upload their own project ideas for public review and comment, or you might want to think about adding offline activities to bring people together uh, and to generate ideas at the start of the process, or you might want to restrict public idea generation, but still have the opportunity for citizens to comment and discuss the ideas coming up. So there's lots of different options on how you could do this. Again, is there a way of bringing citizens um, together with other people with expertise, um, including relevant community organizations or even local government officials to develop their ideas? So, for example, say I'm doing a project on food and well and well-being. Is there an expert on food and well-being that could help me uh, develop my idea, or help me, or have a chat with me about my idea? Consider working with others and asking citizens, or sorry, asking experts to review citizens' proposals and provide feedback. So, feedback is really useful for citizens, uh, and this could be done online, uh, publicly or even just by direct message or email. And then people can develop their ideas after receiving advice. So because of this, you might want to consider um, training and support needed to help citizens uh, with other types of expertise to engage in online spaces. So it might be a good idea to offer on offline support sessions to help residents uh, or community organizations uh, to learn better how to engage uh, on online discussions. So actually training people themselves on how to use online a little bit better. Uh, another thing to consider is after the idea generation phase, are all the projects going to be voted on? Um, or is there going to be a selection phase? Um, how clear is this going to be? Like, is there going to be a selection criteria um, before they start proposing ideas and deliberating? So you want all of these uh, sort of guidelines to be very, very clear at the start so that, you know, you're removing that uh, element of disappointment if it comes up to a selection phase and people think that that's the final vote. You, you don't want that. You want it to be very clear from the start. 
again, having a steering committee is a good idea um, to sort of um, sort of with specific expertise related to the projects um, and who, who live in the local community or the local area to select the proposals. So, um, I don't know if Nadia is still here, but we were chatting a little bit about uh, Antwerp before. I am. <clears throat> Hello. Yeah, so what I was kind of saying is like before with the wee timeline, the wee PB timeline, it doesn't always have to start with the budget. You could start before thinking about ideas. So before thinking about ideas, you can think about themes. So actually, what does, what does the community need or what should be our priorities instead of uh, having it straight away going into a budget, going into criteria and all that. You can actually get the community uh, and the citizens themselves to come up with the theme. And that's what Antwerp did. So I've showed you this before, but uh, they met in small groups and they agreed priorities, but using poker chips. So it was a fun game. Um, it was a bit more interesting. And then they would submit the proposals with the, within the priority themes chosen. So then they would create their ideas after the themes were chosen. And then 80% of small groups would have to reach consensus. So that's how the voting worked in person. And then 20% via an online vote. Uh, and the online vote has actually led to greater participation at offline events. So it's actually encouraged more face-to-face -face, uh, discussion and collaboration. So uh, this is New York as uh, New York's PB. So we're chatting a little bit about open data. So another way of kind of, I don't want to say idea generating, but they've they've already got the sort of what's out there already. So the facts and information, um, and you can see that online. And they use this online map. Um, you can see in this image to show where projects would be. Um, and then they'd have this, and then they would kind of do their idea, idea generation at offline events. And they would have volunteers uh, as budget delegates, and they would research the ideas. And then they would uh, sift through these and shortlist those uh, that, that people needed help. And then they would develop those ideas a bit, the, sorry, they would develop those ideas further. Um, and again, they used uh, voting online and offline. So both phases were mixed, very mixed. So they had an online map, but again, um, offline idea generation, and they had voting online and at offline. So here's another wee picture. So you can see you can, uh, I don't know, like click on your area where you live or what you kind of want to be done differently. Um, it could be something really like simple as well, like, oh, we need to fix the potholes in our roads or, um, I don't know, um, we've got a, uh, you know, I keep saying the play park, but our play parks run down um, and you can actually click in the area that it needs fixed up or um, what needs done and submit an idea. And you can see here on this page, um, they've got a wee support phase. So you can see 261 support this. So, and you can comment and things like that. So, um, another wee picture. So they divided up their projects by district as well so you can see each budget um, comes under a different area a different district so there's different council members under different districts as well and on the right hand side of the page you can see so this is I love this because it's so transparent you can see a full list of all the projects you can see a full list of all the unfeasible projects um, and and this is good because you can actually see why it was unfeasible as well so people who uh, uploaded an idea and it's not gone through and you might feel a bit oh this, this is rubbish like my idea's not even gone through but um they can see why it's been unfeasible so for next year or the year after they can develop that idea so it fits another criteria um, and you can have ideas with projects or ideas without projects so there's a complete list there and it's you click on it and it comes up with with various uh projects and it's really transparent so Paris, again, they submitted ideas online and at offline events. 
Um, and we we're talking about collaboration and working together a little bit earlier. So people um, who've submitted similar ideas are required to work uh, together at offline workshops. So they're, they're required to sort of um, develop those ideas further face to face, which is really nice. And then the voting again would happen online and at offline polling stations. So they had a little ballot boxes in the street and they used a digital tool for online voting as well. I spoke a bit about this earlier, so I'm just going to skip through this. But yeah, what I can say is it's really, really important to have both online and offline channels. So you can see here on the left, there's the sort of online channel. And then on the right, uh, that's people sitting chatting about ideas. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about sort of the development of deliberation. So, um, you know, there's so many different tools. It doesn't just have to be an online digital tool uh, that you can, you can use for a deliberation. So some things to think about. Will you have debates or discussion topics online and offline? So I'm going to uh, go through some of the tools in a little bit, but some of most of the tools have debate options so you can actually create debates or polls online but again how would you replicate that at an offline event um, and how will you share these discussion topics so if you're doing something like that an offline event you have to think about um, what's been spoken about uh, in face to face and how are you going to put that online and vice versa what's what's been spoken about online and how will you bring that offline to events to make sure it's kind of getting uh, to the most sort of amount of people and how will you share outcomes of these discussions so um if you're collecting any information like what's the most that like valuable points that have come out of discussions and how how do you sort of evaluate that like do the people decide what's the most value valuable or do you have a steering group that comes in and goes okay uh, these are the important points that have come out of that discussion um, and that's what's going to be put up online so it's something to think about as well and again is, I spoke about this earlier, but is there a way of bringing citizens together uh, with people with expertise to develop ideas? So this doesn't always have to be online as well. It could be offline. You could bring experts into an event or a sort of deliberation event um, to share their own sort of expertise on uh, subjects or topics. And again, the steering committee. So... Um, how are they going to sort of design this deliberation and development? So you can use the steering committee to decide some of these options. Um, I'm going to show you this quickly, but you can see one of these images uh, is a Google Doc. So again, an idea is to literally use Google Doc uh, to share ideas. So it's quite easy to access, it's collaborative. There's so many social media platforms that you can share your online um, voting tool with uh, like you know Facebook, Twitter, Slack, WhatsApp so getting the conversation going both online and offline. Um, so you guys might actually have a better idea of where this is than me but um, Kelly told me this idea and I thought it was really cool and I think it's in Norway but basically uh, one of the ideas is to get people talking about problems and deliberating ideas by having kitchen table conversations. So they basically get a sheet of paper with a topic or an issue uh, and then friends or families can then just talk about it in the comfort of their own home. So you can sit, sit about with your friends and they'll have like little discussion points. But again, you could use this for a PB. So say you've got a few issues uh, or um, legislation that the council want you to kind of review or deliberate on. You can use these topics um, so simply with just a sheet of paper and chat about it with friends and family. Um, and then you can either input those ideas online or but it's just another way of getting sort of that dialogue going. Um, and people aren't, um, they don't feel as sort of, I don't know, restricted. So, you know, I've got to go to this voting event. Oh no, I've got to kind of speak up if I want to share my ideas. It doesn't have to be as sort of tight as that. It could be very much in your own home chatting to people that you know about an issue. So. It's just another way of doing things. Um, again, to make it more accessible, recording these events and discussion. So we're talking about how you might do that. So you can actually have a live discussion with like 
I'm not sure Skype does this, but like with hundreds of people. So you can have lots of people online uh, or on FaceTime uh, and you can have this discussion going um, or you could have Skype at an event so people can uh, be there in person. So you can get, nowadays you can get these 360 camera recordings and you can record live events as well. So you feel like you're there even though you're miles away. So it's quite handy. Okay, um, I'm just going to stop there for a little bit. Does anyone have any questions? I'm good, thank you. You all right? Okay, I'm just going to carry on then. So some digital tools um, with idea generation and deliberation. Um, so console, has everyone heard of console now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is a uh, Madrid's platform. Um. So yeah, they they're used across like thirty cities or countries or something like that. Um, they're pretty widespread at the moment. And I spoke about this earlier, but console are being used as the digital pilot in Scotland. So. Uh, quite a few councils are using uh, the participatory budgeting part of it, but also they're trialing the debating part and the collaborative legislation part of the tool as well. Um, so here you can see at the top of console debates, proposals, voting, collaborative legislation and PB. So debates, proposals and collaborative legislation. These are all ways that you can sort of deliberate. Um, collaborative legislation. Um, although it's not idea generation and deliberation, it's another way of deliberation in a way because councils can put up, you know, a new policy. Um, I don't know, um, we want to make our air cleaner. How do we do this? Um, and people can, uh, literally, how I was talking about the Word doc, the sort of online Word doc, it's quite like that and that people can just come in with ideas and comment and write. Um, so it's quite collaborative, literally. So yeah, here you can create new proposals. All you need to do is uh, hit create new proposal. And then you can type in some summary, some titles, some text. You can add in videos, you can add in media. Um, and you can also add in like PDF documents or links to other things. So it's um, quite handy. So I was talking about this a bit earlier, but say for example, um, I created a proposal, and this is my proposal, strategic plan for 100% green city. Um, this theme is on the environment. So at the side, you can see categories. I could click on environment, so it's a tag. And then what would come up was all the collaborative legislation, all the debates, all the uh, participatory budgeting, uh, anything related to environment would pop up. So it's a good way to sift through to see if there's any other ideas that are similar to yours. So if there is something similar to yours, you don't want to copy it or you can comment and make that idea better. Um, so nothing's getting like repeated. Okay, so this is participatory. At the top, you can see there is what it is. So I was talking a little bit about what you want to explain in the guidelines, um, the rules. So the rules for voting or idea generating uh, budgets. So in here, you've got uh, all the proposals. And then you've got winning proposals. So this could be from last year or it could be from this year. Contacts, who to contact if you need help. And then, so these buttons you can change uh, like many of the platforms. Um, yeah, so again, you can put important dates. So uh, if you've got a, an idea generation vote, uh, event coming up, you can put them in there. Um, so I don't know if Jez is still here, but. Oh, is that someone joined? So, you know, I'm still here. Can you hear oh, it's me? Nadia. Oh, hi, yeah, sorry. I thought someone had just joined. Um, that's fine. Yeah, so, Jez, you were saying about the kind of, um, you don't want people to, if you don't want it to be anonymous, you know, if people, if the votes are coming up, you can have here a leaderboard. So if you do, if, if it's the other way around and you do want it, to um, if you do want, you know, your votes, this is the highest amount of votes that this project has had or whatever, you can put it in the leaderboard. Um, 
So some people choose to do that, some don't. And I can understand kind of from both sides. Uh, well, if I just come in there, I mean, I think it's, there, there may be different phases. So at the ideas generation phase, or when you're deliberating around a long list of projects, then I think it's really, really valuable to have people being able to say, I, I back this one or, or adding comments. But for me, when you get to the final voting phase, then that's a different moment when it's not about deliberation. And then maybe you would not want to, you know, have all of the comments, but you just you just have the, the, the quality detail on the projects and people have to select the top four projects or something like that. So you might have a different sort of culture at, at a different point in the cycle. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, dep it depends how you want to do it as well. I think on this site, so you can, what you were saying, like if you've got support phase, you can have a leaderboard, but you can also have a leaderboard for the votes as well. So I know what you were saying earlier about how that could maybe sway people. So if a vote's got, say they've got more votes than any other, um, people might want to vote for that more. But again, they might want to vote for that less and vote for a project that doesn't have as much. It just depends. Um, but yeah, this is an example of a participatory um, proposal. So this is in the fund budget. So again, you can put up the, the sort of value of the project, uh, if it's had any votes, comments, uh, how long the project will last, um, support, share and vote. So you can do all these functions. But again, you can turn these functions off. So like we we're saying, um, if you want to make the votes anonymous, you can turn that off or you don't want to have comments on it, you can turn that off. So, so this is your priorities. Um, you can add a new idea. Um, this is a kind of very basic demo. So we've got cheese at every party in Edinburgh and play park with veg garden. So you can, at the bottom here, you can see there's a wee love heart, a wee uh, comment bu button, and then a circle with a sort of uh, restrict, restrict thing. That's a down vote. So I, or I, sort of unsupport button. So you can actually uh, like and down support and comment on proposals. And then that wee button on the far right as well is the share button. So I've shared the same example in the voting, but um, you can see here, you can put points for and then points against. So this is part of the debating and the deliberation aspect of the idea generation uh, in your uh, your priorities. So these points for and against, you can also downvote or upvote. So not just the proposal itself, but you can also downvote and upvote uh, comments. And again, you can add in the location of the, uh, of the project. You can add in any sort of news. So imagine if it was in, a, it, the proposal was put in a news article, a local newspaper, or um, I don't know, you want to add in some video or some media, you could put that in there. So this is Ali, you know, how I've seen that earlier. What if people are scared of dogs? So that's the point against. It's a bit silly, but. Okay, um, and this, I'm not gonna talk too much about this, but this is open active voting. So this is uh, the tool that's connected to your priorities. Um, so it's part of a, a company called Citizens Foundation in Iceland. Um, so once your projects and your priorities have been kind of chosen or sifted through, then they can go through to this and then they can get properly voted on. Um, so you can see here, there's a wee orange button on each picture that if you click on that, um, you will see more information about each project as well. So this, I was going to talk a little bit about this. Um, with technology, now you can kind of use sort of your phones and iPads um, and there's this app you can use, and I can't remember what it's called, I should really remember, but um, you can see exactly what, what something could look like now. So say, for example, you want to renovate something, um, you can kind of, have you heard of Pokemon Go, anyone? Is anyone uh, still? I, I have, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know how you can kind of see like a little creature? Yeah. Imagine that, but with like a project that's you know actually doing something good for your community. So if you've got a new building, that, a new a community center, you can kind of see it or the renovation on your phone. So you can look through the camera. Uh, it picks up 
uh, everything. So it's almost like futuristic showing proposals, what they could look like in the future. <clears throat> um, so again, I've spoken about this before, but not everyone is online. So it's important to use online and offline. Um, not everyone is digitally uh, literate. So if you've got support networks that can sort of support people to use um, iPads or mobile phones or whatever, uh, and you've got drop-in times, that's really useful as well. Uh, it can't, so digital can't completely replace offline. And that's why we have both online and offline processes together. So this is a lot of text here, but basically to, it's really important to encourage participation. And here are some ideas on how to do that. So generating polls or debates. So if you've got a steering group or people that have been allocated to run the process, they themselves could actually start generating debates of interest um, that can be answered quickly uh, and easily. So it's important to use your networks. So who's around you? Um, you can contact people directly to get them to post ideas or ask questions themselves on other people's proposals um, to initiate conversations. So some voting methods, so I spoke about this in the voting webinar, but some methods can actually encourage deliberation. So if you've got a positive or negative voting, for example, uh, this can encourage a little bit of thought on where your priority should be. So positive negative voting is like you've got, say, for example, five positive votes to create and two negative. Um, you've got to consider why am I, you know, why are those negative to sift through like the criteria in a way? So you ha you're having to think about why. And say, for example, you've got a, a project. It's got 50 votes positive and 50 votes negative that might be a, top, a, a topic or a proposal that then gets discussed or puts through to a debating phase. Um, so again, it's another way of doing it. So use your networks. Um, is there any well-known individuals in your community? Um, Facebook groups, local Facebook groups, community Facebook groups um, who you can contact to share your idea generation uh, online platform voluntary sector, charities, and again, like outreach, people who are working in out community outreach, um, contact these people to sort of encourage participation across the board. Um, so I, I spoke about facilitating dialogue. So it's quite a good idea to have some allocated people uh, there just in case to respond to comments or new ideas, because otherwise all you're gonna have is, say for example, one person has commented and there's no sort of discussion on it. It's good to have some people there ready to sort of respond and, and build up that dialogue. Um, I also think it's quite important to create some visual interest. So using multimedia, video, photos, like um, getting people to create videos or create um, some multimedia themselves and then put it up. Um, and, and those people who've created those proposals can then go out to their own networks and be like, oh, watch my video. It's on, my, on this idea generation digital tool. And again, face-to-face -face and offline. So create events and drop-in times for conversations or a table, you know, you know how I was talking about the kitchen table conversations. Um, so it's not just about online. Um, I was talking a little bit about creating videos. So getting people who've created the proposals themselves to do a bit of campaigning. Uh, this can encourage dialogue um, a little bit more. So if they've, if they've made a short video or they've made, you know, some sort of digital storytelling thing about their project um, and that goes up on your platform, that can encourage people to come to your platform as well and get, and get um, talking. So this is the last part that I'm going to talk about. So we're almost at the end. Um, but moderation is quite important. So I think before you even get to moderating, you should really be creating guidelines to explain to people what the platform should be used for. So this is a platform for idea generation and positive change, you know, um, giving them that guideline will make sure that they're not commenting with sort of complaints or um, service complaints and things like that. Um, again, administrators, can set algorithms. So we're going to be talking a little bit about this in the security and verification webinar. Um, but 
administrators can set algorithms, which is basically a sort of setting to make it easier. So for example, they can turn on and off commenting. Uh, they can turn on and off, uh, you know, we don't want the proposals to be uploaded. We want ourselves to do it. You can turn on and off debate. You can also set block blocks. So if you don't want certain language to be used, uh, it won't even go up online at all. So you can actually set it so that it's completely restricted. But again, it's really good idea to make it fairly open and not to have too many restrictions. Because again, um, the more restrictions you have, the less citizens will trust. So with proper guidelines, um, and this is re recommended by Madrid, uh, citizens will typically use the site for what it's meant for. And in their experience, um, and they've got millions of people using their site, uh, that's worked very well. So. Um, so who moderates? It's recommended to someone neutral. So n no one that's actually running a proposal or a, um, a project uh, should be one of the moderators. Um, it could be more than one person, so it doesn't have to be one person. And actually, I recommend that it's good to have more than one person because it can be a lot of work. Um, and again, you could allocate, allocate proposals to experts. So in some of the functions of these tools, you can actually type in uh, people's emails. So they'll get a notification in their email that says, um, a new proposal has been created on uh, environment. Could you have a look through and uh, uh, pass it through so that it goes up online? So they can review and then process these proposals to be put up online. And again, um, after you've done your sort of idea generation part, it's important to review projects. Um, and then after again, sort of promote what's like, um, you can go back to certain groups that have, have completed their proposal on say uh, they've done a youth project you can go to them and say, hey, how far, like, how did you manage to complete this? So it's that accountability and transparency um, and, and also, also people who are running these projects taking responsibility. So here in this video, uh, these two guys are interviewing the mayor. Um, so they're asking him how, uh, how well have these projects been sort of, how well has the process gone? Has there been any problems, challenges? Is, has everything been completed? So again, it's like, it's on camera, it's going up on YouTube, it's very transparent and people can see what's, what's happened and maybe where they've gone wrong and maybe where they've gone right as well. Um, so yeah, what I was talking about is monitoring impl implementation. Um, so that means seeing where projects are going. So it's not just, you know, you've been given the money, that's the end of the process. It's actually continuing the cycle. So people can see exactly where the projects are going and what's happened to the money and what phase they're at. So this is on console. You can see the Finnish uh, participatory budgets. You can actually, so this is on the Madrid, so I'm sorry because it's in Spanish, but you can see here 2016, 2017 and 2018. So you can see the results from those PBE processes and then also the milestones. So milestones is like targets of where they've hit. So like a project has to has to be delivered by this date or an event for this project is going to be on this date and like images and media and stuff like that. So here's one for from 2017. They've got their milestones here. So you can see some pictures from their projects from uh, 2017. Okay, and last but not least, evaluating. So gathering uh, data, you can do this by using data or surveys, feedback forms, and even social media. So you can do that as well. And in the next few webinars, we're going to be covering planning your PB process, integrating online and offline. So how to be comm savvy. So communications, making the case for digital PB, community mapping, um, inclusion in digital, and I spoke about earlier, but we'll be covering um, user verification and security as well. And then that is it. I'm just gonna um, turn off my PowerPoint. I know that was a bit rushed towards the end because I just realized it's two o'clock, so. Well. Can you, oh, 
Can you see me? No, you can't. Not yet. Hello. Um, hi. Um, thank you, Annie, for, for that. It was really helpful to kind of get a, an overview of the, of the that's going on and, and also the complexity, really, because there's a lot of stuff that's involved in all of this to, to think about if you're a local authority to, to pick it up. I'm interested, Holly, where you're from and, and who you are and maybe, we, maybe you're interested who I, who I am and where I'm from. Yeah, so I'm I'm uh, based uh, I'm Demsoc basically ah. a project assistant. I'm based in Manchester. Um, yeah, and I've been uh, helping out with projects like Public Square. Um, right, right, I wasn't sure. So yeah. the, so is yeah. it only a three that's on at the moment? So there's is there anybody else listening in, or is it just us? It's just us three. I think Nadia has left. Right. Okay, so will you be sending out the the the, power, the presentations and things like that and um, all that sort of thing? Yes. So I hope you don't mind, Jez, but I've actually been recording uh, yeah. so that they can be reused, and I'm going to be putting them up on YouTube. Do you mind? Nope. Cool. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll share out the presentations, and we've also got information sheets. Um, we still add a couple of little bits and bobs. Um, but they'll go up on Knowledge Hub uh, with the presentations and then the, the actual webinars will go up on YouTube. So it's reusable. So even though no one, uh, we've only had like a couple of people turn up, uh, you can watch it in your own time. So if you've got people, it's there. Okay. Well, I'm going to go now. So thank you very much for everybody. And um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll meet up again soon, I'm sure, no doubt. Yeah, thank you very Bye. much, Jez. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.